All right, I recently discussed Yiddish, which is the language of Ashkenazi Jews, and the Ashkenazim. And I want to say a lot more about it, because I, Yiddish is a major Jewish cultural artifact uh, and a major American cultural artifact, uh, which you might not have realized. This, is a, this picture is of a Yiddish, it's a Yiddish theater poster. There used to be extensive Yiddish theater uh, and radio in America, and there's still a small presence. Uh, Yiddish, uh, there are a lot of onomatopoeias. You know what that is. It's a word like whoosh, which sounds like the thing it is. And this onomatopoeic quality to Yiddish makes it very funny and irreverent. Um, wonderful insults and vulgar slang. So let's see some Yiddish words that will, excuse me, drop my notes, that will seem familiar. Uh, yeah, bagel. It's a ring-shaped bread roll made by boiling and baking the dough. Bupkis. Emphatically nothing, as in he isn't worth bupkis. Chutzpah. Nerve, guts, daring, audacity. Glitch. A minor malfunction. Kibitz. Uh, to offer unwanted advice, for example, to someone playing cards, or just to converse idly. Klutz. A clumsy person. Kosher. Correct according to Jewish law, normally used in reference to di dietary laws, but it can also be slang for, you know, legitimate, appropriate. He's okay. He's kosher. Kvetch. To complain habitually. To gripe. Also is a noun, uh, someone who constantly complains. Meshugas uh, means... Um, uh, crazy or senseless activity or behavior or just general craziness. Stop with the mashugas. Uh, nudge. To pester, nag, or whine, and like many of these words, also is a noun, a pest or whiner. Nosh. Uh, verb and noun, snack. I need something to nosh on. Oy, vey. It's an interjection of grief, pain, or horror. Now, putz uh, is an insult. It's a vulgar word. It's an insult. Um, uh, you know, it's like a jerk. But what it literally means is penis. So, schlep is to drag or haul um, uh, an object or to walk or to make a tedious journey. Like, I had to schlep my suitcase across two terminals to make my flight. A schlemiel is an inept or clumsy, feckless person, a bungler. Uh, adult. A schlamazel, according to translators, is a very difficult word to translate, but it means generally a chronically unlucky person. So there's this classic vaudeville skit where the schlemiel spills the soup into the schlamazel's lap. Schlock, something cheap, shoddy, or inferior. Uh, stop bringing home all that schlock from China. Now, schlong uh, is a vulgar word that very straightforwardly means penis. Schmear uh, is a noun or a verb, and it's, it's a spread. Like, I need a schmear of cream cheese on my bagel. Schmo, a stupid person. Schmooze, to converse informally, make small talk, or chat. Schmuck, this is a vulgar word. It means a contemptible or foolish person. But it literally means penis. Schnoz, a nose, or especially a large nose. Like, wow, that's quite a schnoz you got on you. A spiel is a sales pitch or short persuasive speech. Shtick is a comic theme or defining habit or distinguishing feature. Mr. Richardson has that shtick with the uh, baseball bat. So, Stup is vulgar slang for intercourse. Spritz is a sprinkling spray or liquid, small amount of liquid. Tukus, um, or uh, its shortcut, tush, means uh, buttocks, bottom, rear end. And verklempt means choked with emotion. You might have seen an old SNL skit where Mike Myers dresses up as a woman in a very New York Jewish accent. Uh, sometimes claims that uh, she's totally verklempt. Talk amongst yourselves. Now, um, there, let's discuss the state, current state of Yiddish. So, 
I, I've read a 2014 article from The Atlantic called Oy Vey, Yiddish has a problem. It's a somewhat pessimistic view of the current state of Yiddish. This article notes that while there's a lot of Yiddish, Amer a lot of Yiddish words in American English, as you've just seen, the future of the language is uncertain. 2007 American Community Survey on Language Use counted just 158 to 159,000 Yiddish speakers. That was a drop of approximately 1,000 Yiddish speakers per year from the previous survey. More and more Jews have, have secularized, and the number of Orthodox Jews has shrunk as a percentage of all Jews. This has implications for Yiddish because, on, because only Orthodox Jews use Yiddish daily as their principal language. Historically, American Jews have been more moderate and relaxed in following the tenets of Judaism, classifying themselves as reform or conservative. And we'll talk more about these categories later. Reform or conservative more than orthodox. In a study of Jewish Americans conducted in 2013, the Pew Research Center found that 35% of Jews in America belong to the reform movement, 18% call, call themselves conservative, and 30% themselves orthodox. And even those raised orthodox tend to switch over to less traditional forms of Judaism at higher rates than those uh, raised in other parts of the faith. So that bodes poorly for Yiddish. But according to the same survey, um, uh, it shows that there, there are very high fertility and large rates and, and large family sizes among the Orthodox. So it appears that the community is growing. The community of Yiddish speakers is growing, not shrinking. Uh, that same report said that many Jewish American baby boomers grew up speaking Yiddish at home, but dropped it along with the Orthodox lifestyle when they reached adulthood. So uh, this, this study hypothesized that today secular Jews really just aren't that interested in speaking Yiddish. But others in the Yiddish, Yiddish community have a different perspective. Jonathan Brent, um, this guy is the executive director of uh, YAVO, YIVO, I guess, but that, that's Yiddish and a Yiddish acronym. It means the Institute for Jewish Research. Uh, and he says, quote, what we see is not nearly as bleak as some people make it out to be, unquote. This organization hosts a summer uh, Yiddish immersion program that has seen increasing interest in the language. In fact, Brent said the students that come to YIVO to study Yiddish break, in two, st break two stereotypes uh, students associated with learning language have. Number one, they don't seem very religious. Number two, uh, very few claim Jewish heritage. He says, again, quote, our students come from all over the world, Lithuania, Poland, Ukraine, Germany. They are studying Yiddish because they want contact with this culture that once flourished in their lands and are trying to retrieve it, unquote. Brent also says that Yiddish seems cool, I'm using air quotes for cool, and involves an element of hipsterism, you know, like people who have chickens in their backyard. Um, it's a return to a culture that is at once marginalized but also familiar. Uh, Michael Wex, he's the author of this bestseller from 2005 called Born to Kvetch, Yiddish Language and Culture and All Its Moods. He thinks a younger generation of secular Jews is seeking connection to a culture and time they feel removed from. He, he says, quote, the American Jewish middle class is well entrenched and the, culture, uh, and the culture and stigma attached to Yiddish have long gone and vanished. He's referring to a post-Holocaust disassociation of post-war Jews from their culture, because they were trying to become um, Americanized. He continues, The vast population of Jews have the vaguest idea of what their religion is. They know about the Holocaust, Israel, holidays, and foods, but beyond that, people don't know much. Speaking Yiddish is a way to assert and flaunt Jewish identity publicly without necessarily connecting yourself with religious beliefs. Uh, uh, Wex agrees that Yiddish possesses a sense of kind of retro cool that may save it yet. He points to pop culture and social media as keepers and even encouragers of Yiddish, arguing that uh, Yinglish, kind of a Spanglish-like combination of English and Yiddish, is a good first step in provoking the curiosity of potential Yiddish speakers, whether they are Jewish or not. Uh, this article I've been referring to, um, uh, it, um, it's, it's from 2014, but a story on the NPR show 1A earlier this year in 2020 was much more optimistic. It was largely an interview with two authors of, of this book, How Yiddish Changed America and How America Changed Yiddish. It's a collection of essays, and it's edited by uh, Ilan Stobbins and Joshua Lambert, these two guys here. Uh, Ilan Stobbins is actually a Mexican-American who grew up speaking uh, a form of Spanish and Yiddish. He was a, he's a native Yiddish speaker. And Josh Lambert is uh, involved with the Yiddish Book Center. 
and these two, two guys pointed out that there, there are about 400,000 plus speakers of Yiddish worldwide. You know, not quite half those in the U.S. Um, and the authors echo the previous article's enthusiasm for the popularization of Yiddish. Uh, I didn't know this, but amazingly, uh, there was a revival of the great Broadway musical Fiddler on the Roof. Uh, it ran for about two years, ending um, la this, this last January in 2020. So that's amazing. It was super popular. It sold out for two years, and yet the whole thing is in Yiddish. I have to assume people going, um, not everyone going, understood Yiddish, but uh, apparently Yiddish is funny, even if you don't understand it. Um, the Holocaust, so, so they, these two guys emphasize that Yiddish is not a dying language. The Holocaust started a new phase in Yiddish. It obviously devastated the number of native speakers, but the following period is a, was a great integration of Yiddish speakers to other parts of the world, especially uh, North America, and, and you see the emergence of Yinglish. Uh, as the previous article noted, there, there was initially an embarrassment of Yiddish as Jews assimilated, but now there's this popularization, popularization of Yiddish. Yiddish has become cool. Um, you probably can also see a um, uh, a, a inter intersection where um, we go. where uh, Jewish humor and Yiddish uh, intersect. So, uh, and the best example is this great nugget from uh, 1974. Francis. No, no, that's not Laws in game. Got the walk. It's all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Big is in. Take off. As big as they and that a lady? They're darker than us. What? So I will leave you with that, uh, and if you don't think uh, Yiddish is cool and funny, you can cushion main tukus. I heard that he had 